good evening friends today's topic is anesthesia for mri so it is a very easy topic but an interesting topic it comes under the section of non operating room anesthesia and whatever concerns are there for nora will apply to anesthesia for mri also so we'll go through the indications for giving anesthesia for mri what are our concerns what are what are all uh, the drugs that are available to be given for anesthesia for mri the peri mri concerns the setup of an mri room the setup of an intraoperative mri which is an emerging technology so we'll go through all of this one by one starting with uh, what is mr so magnetic resonance imaging is a widely used diagnostic tool used to investigate many conditions and as and when it has been advanced anesthesia has been used to facilitate magnetic resonance scanning since the 1980s today many units perform interventions within or adjacent to a mr scanner and increasingly patients will need to be anesthetized for either the scan or the intervention so in addition the magnetic field strengths that are in routine use have increased and more patients are now being scanned who are having active implanted medical devices on them or some neurostimulators pacemakers or drug pumps in them which again adds to the challenges for the anesthesia team so earlier only patients were subjected to plain mri but nowadays the pool of patients is changed with more and more old age patients having pacemakers on them are being subjected to mri which increases our task the combination of a continuous strong magnetic field reduced patient access in the mri suit and a site frequently remote from the operating theater suit that is non operating room anesthesia concerns all these means that these cases are complex to handle so even though the scan in itself is easy the peri mri concerns are complex who are the patients which require anesthesia or sedation either in the form of iv anesthesia or general anesthesia for mri they are infants and children with neurological diseases with vascular malformations or oncological tumor growth they may be children or adults with learning disorders who may not follow the commands given by the radiographer who may not be able to lie still in a closed mri environment for up to 1 hour they may need sedation patients with severe movement disorders like tics or dystonias who may not be able to give that required position or who may not be able to lie still in the mri patients whose position is limited in by pain may be in acute trauma do ct is done in trauma some cases may require an mri to confirm the findings so if the patient is in severe pain he may move or he, <clears throat> he may not be able to give a particular position for the mri those may require sedation again claustrophobic patients as we all know mri is an enclosed chamber and that chamber is encircling your entire face and patients who are having claustrophobia they may not feel comfortable going inside that closed chamber so we we may require to give sedation to them again ventilated and icu patients and patients undergoing stereotactic neurosurgical procedures they may require sedation also the new upcoming technology is intraoperative mri wherein the neurosurgeon while di uh, while dissecting the supratentorial tumor he or she does the mri in the intraoperative phase itself and there are specific concerns for the anesthesiologist when the patient is undergoing an intraoperative mri so typically an mri suit if you have seen in your hospital you might you must have noticed it is always situated on the ground floor you must remember why you must ask questions why an mri suit is on the ground floor we'll we'll deal it with in the later part of the presentation but you uh, but you must have seen an mri suit in your hospital it is typically divided into four zones for safety purposes so the first zone is the region which includes all the areas that are freely accessible to the general public this area is typically outside the mr environment itself and is the area through which patients healthcare personals and other employees of the mr site access the mr environment so basically it is like a reception area 
which is freely accessible to everyone, the patients, relatives, and the staff. Then we come inside to zone two. This area is the interface between the publicly accessible uncontrolled zone one and a strictly controlled zone three, which is further inside. So typically patients are greeted in zone two, but are not free to move throughout the zone two at will, but rather are under supervision of the MR staff. It is in the zone two that the resident radiology doctor, the resident anesthesiology doctor takes patient histories, answers to medical insurance questions and answers to magnetic resonance imaging screening questions that are typically obtained. So in this consents are taken by anesthetist, uh, risks of the procedure are explained, allergies of any contrast dye are noted down and there is a questionnaire of MRI which is signed off by the MR personnel which ticks off all the boxes and takes meticulous history as in the patient is having any ferromagnetic substance on him. If there is a pacemaker has been implanted or any bone implant or any cochlear implant or any other ferromagnetic device or a neurostimulator device in situ of the patient, all this history is noted down. All these things are done in the zone two. Then further inside there is zone three. This area is the region in which free access by unscreened non-MR personnel or ferromagnetic substances or equipment can result in serious injury and even death as a result of interactions between the individuals or equipment and the MR scanner's particular environment. These interactions include but are not limited to those with the MR scanner static and time-varying magnetic fields. This zone is strictly restricted with access to regions within it. Zone 4 are controlled by the zone 3 and it is entirely under the supervision of MR personnel. Coming to the main zone 4, this is the main MR scanner magnet room. Zone 4 by definition will always be located within the zone 3 because it is the MR magnet in itself and its associated magnetic field which generates the existence of zone 3. So zone 4 is where the actual MR is being done with a strong magnetic field. This is a graphical demonstration of the various zones of MRI starting from zone 1 which is the reception area then the zone 2 which is the patient holding history taking area then the control room or the computer room which is the zone 3 and the zone 4 wherein the actual magnet lies. So for every MR case anesthesiologist should prepare with the support of support staff a plan for providing optimal anesthesia care within the special environment of the MRI suit. We must remember that most of the MR suits are away from the operation theater wherein most of the anesthetists spend most of their time and they may be unfamiliar with the surroundings of the MR suit as in where is the emergency drug card kept, where are the emergency drugs, where is the ET tube, where is the scope and blade. So all these things an anesthetist should be familiar with before taking the patient inside. So in addition to addressing the medical needs of the patient, the features of this plan include requirements of the scan and personal needs, positioning of the equipment, special requirement or unique issues of the patient or imaging study, positioning of the anesthesiologist and the patient, and planning for any inadvertent emergencies that might take. So what are the general concerns regarding an MRI? Broadly, we can classify them into the following groups. That is concerns regarding contrast, concerns regarding the noise produced by the MR, concerns regarding the current produced, concerns regarding ferromagnetism, which is one of the most important concerns. It has lead to cases where there has been death of the patient because of certain ferromagnetic substances were not screened and taken inside the zone 4 leading to sticking of the patient or the trolley to the magnet and leading to death. So we should take care of this concern. Then there are concerns regarding burns and concerns regarding helium escape. So one by one we'll go through. Most common is the contrast concerns and ferromagnetic concerns.